that we should write about or speak about something that we know, something that maybe we would be considered an expert. I'm not sure that I believe that, but we're going to go with it. I wish I were not an expert on the topic that I chose for the inaugural season of Wednesdays with Watson. I wish I could tell you that I was an expert in this field because of the degrees on my walls or because classes that I've attended or just I was born with the expertise, but none of that is true. The reality is that the topic that I decided to spend my inaugural season my podcast on comes from personal experience backed by a lifetime of trauma. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. It is December of 2022, and I hope that this time in your life is a sweet season. And for those of you who struggle this time of year, it is my prayer that we can help you here. During December, as you just heard a clip from the inaugural podcast, we will be visiting season one. And we're going to do that because I often get new listeners who don't find their way to some of those earlier episodes and wonder what we are all about at the end of the day. And so we are going to walk through season one over the next couple episodes with just a few clips of it and looking back with hindsight to see how faithful God has been. So often times I mention the song made popular by C.C. Winans and written by Jen Johnson, The Goodness of God. And when I look back at even the last two and a half years of this podcast, I can see that all of my life, he continues to be faithful. The clip I just played for you was born out of obedience, really, as the Lord was calling me to talk about some of these things that others don't talk about. And this podcast was born out of the pandemic and the fact that I had nothing to do and the fact that my own PTSD was raging and I could not find anything to help me. Intertwined in these episodes, I'm going to be answering some questions that were asked of me on Facebook as I pose the question to people, both PTSD survivors and those who love us, what would you like to know about PTSD that you don't already know? Because the clip that you just heard was from our inaugural episode, Healing That Doesn't Make Sense. And there's nothing more that I would rather do than talk about anything else that I could potentially be an expert at. But the Lord called me to talk about trauma and in the dark places, how he is the star of the story. And so I hope that you will enjoy this episode that flashes back to a few of those first episodes in season one. And I will link those entire episodes in the show notes for those of you who are trying to find it. So this episode, Healing That Doesn't Make Sense, I remember when I post, when I hit the publish button on that, I was terrified and woke up the next morning and saw it in all the places. And I knew that this was for real. And so I knew that the Lord had given me the desire of my heart by letting my voice be heard in a way that I could minister to other people. So in many ways, this is remembering my why. This, these next couple episodes, you, the listener, why do I do this? So that we can highlight Jesus, who is the star of the story. So that being said, let's see what's been going on over the past couple of years. But first, listen to this next clip from that first episode, Healing That Doesn't Make Sense. I can't wait to tell you the story of my church and how they came alongside of me. I can't wait to tell you the story of my pastor's wife, who drove me to the hospital and admitted me to the psych ward. I can't wait to tell you the story of the shock on my face when the doctor told me that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. So when I listened to that clip myself, when I, that day in April of 2020, after having bought a microphone off of Amazon before the rest of the world did, and I was literally in a guest closet. And you could tell the difference between the audio between now and then. And I remember just kind of getting in there and saying what was on my heart and talking about how I could not wait to tell you some of these stories. And we've told some of those stories. And during the course of these next couple podcasts, I'll be sharing excerpts of some of those stories of how I couldn't wait to tell you how God had been so, so faithful I mentioned in that clip about 
spending five days in a psych ward or a behavioral health unit in 2008. And I wanted to wait to tell you that story, but we tell that story and we'll be sharing some clips with that as well. But what I find so amazing and what I find so redemptive and what I find so Joel 225-ish is that God has redeemed those years. He redeemed the five days on the behavioral health unit, and he's doing that because now I work on one. When I get the opportunity to put that badge on with my name and a little title underneath it that says Behavioral Health Services, I still get a tingle in my spirit because I can't believe that God has found found the way to tell the story, or is telling the story, I should say he didn't find it, that one day I would be the person on the other side of that behavioral health unit. And that happened this year in the year of 2022, the year of my super jubilee, which I will talk about often during these next couple episodes. But the fact that in this episode in 2020, I said, I can't wait to tell you this story. I could have waited and it was painful. And you'll hear that in clips from episodes. But guys, if you're under the sound of my voice and you're in the darkest place of your life, and I have to say that being admitted to a psych ward is a dark place. As my friend who took me said, if you didn't want to take your life before you go to a behavioral health unit, you do after. And so now when I get the opportunity to work on a behavioral health unit, I want to be the person that people look at and say, you are different. I want to be a light in that dark place because I remember how dark it is. And you'll hear some clips of that behavioral health stay either in this episode or the next one from that season, first season, season one. So you can, you can understand that this healing just simply doesn't make sense. But what really doesn't make sense is that now I get to be the person on the other side. I remember those days in the, in the, in the behavioral health unit. And when I, when I got admitted, I was fine until they took my phone. And now every day that I get to go work, I see that same thing going down, that blank look in their eyes where they know that now they're technically disconnected from the outside world. They're disconnected from their friends. And, and I get it. And I remember sobbing that day. And now when I work on that floor, it's sad. There's no doubt about it. And unfortunately, more people leave there just as sick as they came than what you will find in my story, where that was the beginning of a lot of healing. And so as we continue to walk through this, I want you to understand that, you know, the, the, the doctor told me that I had PTSD and I was shocked. And so if you're under the sound of my voice, we will be doing some episodes that will answer some questions about PTSD. But you can imagine some of the, all the trauma that I've been through, whether you've heard my story or not, that I was shocked that I had PTSD because I had been conditioned just to just keep up and go, go with the flow and put it behind me and put it, no man who puts his hand to the plow and look his back as fit for the kingdom of God is a verse that indicted me. But guys, if you're under the sound of my voice, there are many of you out there who probably are suffering from PTSD, from trauma, particularly after the last two and a half years. And so it is our goal, you are my why, to give you hope when that happens. The question though is how do we get there from here? Let's listen to this clip again from that first episode, Healing That Doesn't Make Sense. How do we get there from here? How do we take the stigma away from medical intervention? How do we take the stigma away from pharmaceutical intervention? How do we take the stigma away from trauma-informed therapy? How do we help people? How do we do that? So I ask more questions on that episode, and again, I'm going to link that in the show notes, but... How do we take the stigma, especially in the church, away from mental illness? How do we help people understand that mental illnesses like complex post-traumatic stress disorder, how do we take the stigma away from it? How do we help people understand that Jesus is more than enough, but he's also provided medications and help and therapy? 
How do we do that? And that was one of my main, main things that I wanted to talk about on this podcast was how do we get people talking about it? How do we get people paying attention to it? How do we get people to understand that this needs to be treated? And so we spent a lot of time this first season talking about this, uh, the layman's terms, if you will, for PTSD. Like how in the world do we understand that? And it is no longer just a soldier's disease. PTSD and complex PTSD is so common. And so that's why we started this podcast. And so as we moved through that first episode, I talked a little bit about some of the healing that had already taken place. And so check out this, this clip of that first episode, Healing That Doesn't Make Sense. That has not come for me. There is lots of healing that has come for me. And over the course of this podcast, I'll share some of those things with you. But he hasn't taken it all away like I'd like him to. But he's still the star of my story. And I want him to be the star of yours too. He has to grow together, to learn together. The podcast itself will evolve And it will be directed by that star of the story that I keep telling you about, the great physician who wants to heal us in the way that he wants to heal us so that it can be used. Romans 8.28 is a verse that's so often overused, but so true that all things work together for the good to those that love God. And if we will let the star of our story, the great physician, heal us in whatever way he wants to, whether that means that we still have to depend on him for every single breath because sometimes it hurts to breathe when the nightmares and the terrors and the, and the physical symptoms of these, some of these things still occur. I want us to always lean on that great physician and trust him because he is good. He is so good. Even if he doesn't heal us the way we want to be healed, he will redeem those years. As we near the end of this first recap podcast healing that doesn't make sense. My question to you is, do you believe what you just heard? Do you believe that he can work all things together for good? It is an often misquoted verse in the Bible. But do you believe that God can take your pain? And whether or not he decides to take it away, do you believe that he is faithful and that he will never leave you? or forsake you. Do you believe that? We can look back at this first episode that was two and a half years ago, and I, in so many ways, guys, am a completely different person. Part of that is because of this podcast and my understanding that it is incumbent on me to make sure that I am faithful with this story. And so when I struggle, when I go through times, when I want to give up, I remember you, the listener, wherever you might be right now, whether you're walking in your car, whether you're in India, whether you're in New Zealand, whether you're in somewhere in Europe, whether you're in Asia, all over the world, under the sound of my voice, it is my prayer for you, is that you will find a shred of hope, a shred of faith that in your darkest hour right now, and you're going to hear about that over the next several drops in my darkest hours how God was just so, so faithful and how he continues to be faithful and how he continues to require of me that I am faithful with my story, not just telling it to you, but that I am faithful in my pain and how I live my life. And so you are my why. If you are listening to this, you are my why. So many times in content creation, people ask that question so that we stay home why do you do what you do? Why do I get behind this microphone every two weeks for people to listen to my voice or the story of somebody else? I do that because I want to give you hope in the dark times. We are in the Christmas season. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, sometimes that can be very difficult for people. But God is so, so faithful. And I hope that you will listen to these next couple episodes that we're going to drop and see the faithfulness of God over the course of the last two and a half years as we walk through some of what God has helped us record on the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. I am so grateful for you, the listener. I am grateful for those of you who support me on Patreon. That link is absolutely in the show notes 
all the money that comes into the podcast, whether it be merchandise or whether it be uh, donations, is given back to the ministry. And, and, and by that, I mean given back to counseling centers. We have a fundraiser running right now on Facebook for Baylight Counseling. It is our goal and our desire to provide money for counseling for people who cannot afford it. And this year we were able to do that for eight different individuals. And so thank you to those of you who listen. Thank you to those of you who donate. Thank you more than anything to those of you who pray. We know that our God is faithful. We know that he is so, so faithful. And we're going to find that out over the course of the next couple of drops as I share excerpts from those early episodes, because all of my life, guys, he has been so, so faithful. All of my life, he has been so, so good. And he alone is worthy of it all. And so as you as you hit end on the podcast today, I hope that you will continue to listen to some of these recap episodes so that you can see why I care and so that you know that you are my why if you're the person that is struggling out there today. Somewhere along the way, I can't remember when, it wasn't on that first episode, but I got accustomed to doing this and I never leave a keyboard without saying this. I never leave a microphone without saying this because I believe it with all of my heart and I want you to believe it too. You are seen, you are known, you are heard, you are loved, and you are valued. And until next time, guys, I hope that you will remember that. And I hope that you find faith and hope and love and all of its cousins and the documentation of my story. And so for those of you hearing it for the first time, hang out. We're going to drop several episodes here in the month of December that recap those early, early days where I'm telling you the stories. This has been my year of the Super Jubilee, and that is a biblical principle that after seven periods of seven years, there was a super jubilee. And during the super jubilee, which is the year that I just finished, the 50th year of my life, during the 50th year in, in Old Testament times, it was a time of returning home. It was a time of forgiving debts. It was a time of the super reset. And as I just celebrated my 51st birthday, I look at this year of the super jubilee that I had and all of the changes that I made because I want to abandon everything for the cross, because there are a people that are unreached in this world, and now more than ever, I have a passion in my heart, jealous for your soul so that you can spend eternity with Jesus. And so if you don't know how to do that, that the very first link is the Contact Amy link. I would love to tell you about the star of the story and how you too can experience healing that doesn't make sense. Let my life glorify you and teach me to walk.